Hello everybody and welcome to this Train Sim TV video, this is Mark. Today we're going to take a look at something different, we're going to be doing a steam run, which is something that we don't normally do, uh, mainly because Tom's hopeless and can't drive them, so uh, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, a brand new route that's come out, or a new version of a route that finally completes it to a decent sort of length that can be driven, and that is the WHW East of Crane Lavitch route by Stuart Parker and Alan Pendlebury. Now currently this route has been circulated in a number of Facebook groups. I found it on Railsim Users Group. Um, I believe they also have their own Facebook group which I'll put in the link in the description. Uh, currently it's a media file link. It would be great to see this route actually on its own website or something. Um, but currently it's available via that method. Uh, maybe it'll become fully available when it's 100% it's complete because it is still I think in development. And this route basically looks at the lines of Scotland in the Kirin, Larich and Calendar area, the former Calendar and Urban route. Uh, and it, it features the line from Calendar to Kirin, Larich in this version. It also includes the Killing Branch from Killing Junction. Uh, and if we look at the map, we can have a look at that. It also includes the line across the creek, so it's a fair amount of track work. Now this line is one of Scotland's most beautiful routes. It really is a stunning line. If you go to the West Highlands from um, England, I always recommend driving up to Calendar on the uh, A9 and then driving across to Crane Lavich to meet the A82 there because this drive across here is a really nice drive and I'm looking forward to driving this route in a few minutes. So you got the line here, well, the one we're going to be travelling is from down here at Calendar, head up to Balquidder, which is where we turn off and head up the Glen Ogle Valley. Um, eventually up to Killing Junction, then we'll head over Glen Ogle Summit, which is around this area, the Loop Summit, uh, before we head down to Crane Lavich, and that's where we meet the West Highland, and also carries on to Oban. Nowadays this route was completely closed, it closed in the 1960s, it was due to close anyway, but there was a huge rock fall uh, around Glen Ogle, which closed the line. So anyway, enough talking, let's uh, start moving. We've got the Bossman Games Black 5 on 6 Mark 1s, it's just a quick drive consist that I've thrown together. Nothing specific, uh, specific about it. So I'll put the ejector on. And I do apologise if I'm hard to hear at any point during this video. Steam lockers are quite hard to... Uh, judge with the sound in uh, videos, generally it seems. trying to find the sweet spot for the ejector at the minute. Which is there. Alright, so let's depart then. Totally random Black 5, it's not necessarily a Scottish one or anything, I've replaced it. station that we've just departed is um, Calendar. Lovely custom uh, asset. To say this is a freeware route as well, and the actual payware requirements, there's quite a lot of freeware requirements, but payware requirements, there's not actually that many. It's a really nice looking uh, set of assets actually. For a freeware production it's quite impressive. Put 
So I'll go into the passenger view I'll explain a little bit about from the manual. So we're looking at gradients wise, it's quite a steep line in places. Certainly some impressive gradients on here. Just trying to look at the manual now to find them. So from calendar we've just left, we soon go on to our 1 in 61 climb. Then a level section to our strafe before we climb the 1 in 60 climb to uh, Glen Oglehead, which is a summit at Louis. Between Louis and, uh, sorry, the summit between Louis and Balquidder. So 1 in 60 climb there for about 5 miles. And then it drops down to Louis and it's level across to Crane Lavich as we go across the valley. So we'll go back to the local in a sec, we'll get the local prepared to climb. start of the climb, I'm going to get some coal put in. Get the fire ready for it. Try and keep the local follow pressure. Looks lovely like that. We're now on the 1 in 61. And there'll be a case of trying to creep our speed up on this line. As we keep climbing up for the next few miles. Loving the detail where that's going on with this, it's looking really good. Get some water in just to keep the uh, nice water nice and behind the glass. Doing a nice steady 33 miles an hour. Apart from St. Bride's Crossing. This crossing was set up in 1883 according to the manual. Uh, 1893, sorry. Um, and it splits the section between Calendar West and Strafair boxes. John Anderson had wanted to open a station here but landowner objections presented it, prevented it. A switching out facility was provided in 1921 so the box could be locked out of use and not open. For a period of siding had existed on the downside, the crossing loop and signal box closed in 1951. During the Second World War, extensive sidings were laid out in the fields at St. Bride's.
which is interesting actually. We're now heading along the valley towards Strafair. Next thing that we'll come to will be Craig the Kaelic platform. The platform was for use of the railway staff and their families. I know in real life the road goes on the other side of this valley and you can actually still see on the other side of the lock you can actually still clearly see where the uh, embankment uh, of the railway was on this side. It's a beautiful section of uh, road and uh, railway. Would be so nice to see this uh, open again one day. I don't know if we ever will to be honest but it'd be fantastic to see. So in a moment we're coming through Craig the Craelic platform, which is here. And interesting, just up here they've got some um, signals here that are just like the ones on the Pass of Brando on the Oban line uh, that are cleared if the line is clear. Basically if a rock hits the wires, which I'll show you in a minute, the signal goes to the on position. So yeah, this is a, a system they used in, um, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's exclusively on the Calendar and Oban line, but basically, rock fall from up here, if a rock hits these wires, or uh, breaks the wires, the signals, and there's another one at the other end, would go to the on position, telling the driver that obviously the line is blocked, and that were in response to uh, rock falls and trains hitting rock falls over the years that they uh, decided that was a good method to try and prevent it. So next up for us is Straff Air Station. Probably coming to in a minute. Lovely scenery along here, it really is. Such an underrated route because it's a route that I've not actually heard many people talking about. Even steam uh, train some enthusiasts, I've not heard many people talking about. I think it deserves a lot more recognition than what it gets. Um, because it, it, I've been actually keeping my eye on this route for a long time. I've never downloaded it because I wanted to get the full experience of when it went through to Crane Lamich, which is what this version provides. Um, and so far I've been I'm blown away by it, it's uh, really capturing the uh, feel of the line in real life.
trying to keep the camera out of the cab a little bit so that I can uh, you can hear me speaking because otherwise you'll not hear me at all. And I keep having to change the volume and uh, it's a bit awkward using uh, the software. The one thing I'm noticing is there's no uh, ambient sounds at the moment. It would be nice to have some bird sounds or something because it's such a, a vibrant area for wildlife around here. To be said, train sim doesn't generally do mountainous routes very well, but so far with the haze and everything, this is uh, it's looking pretty good. The AP uh, enhancement pack has been enabled with this room. You get a uh, RWP you can install to activate that. So that has to be going some way towards in improving the uh, look a little bit. It's interesting how it is so hazy though, because I haven't actually set it to hazy at all. It's quite good. So it is doing a really good job of blocking out the uh, lower res mountains in the background. Strafael read quite a bit from the manual because there's quite a bit of history to go with Strafael Station and it's a, a lovely looking area there as you can see. Station opened 1st of June 1870, it was a two platform station with a loop. It was originally a single platform station, possibly doubled not long after opening. The station was noted for its ornate, ornate stark fountain of the Kruiken granite, made of Kruiken uh, granite. Choice of station master as a reward for many years of service. And that is just here. Lovingly made into a custom asset. And a lot of these, uh, the whole station area has been made into a custom asset. Myself and Chris Barnes actually uh, visited this area last year whilst on holiday up in the area. And it's uh, quite hard now to see where the station used to be. I think this area is now a housing estate. But the fountain exists still, but the uh, actual area where the line was you can hardly tell. There was a station there. Either side of the station, you can still walk along most of the track bed, but uh, where the station actually was, it's uh, quite hard to trace it. So continuing. After the station closer, closure, the uh, Stark Phantom was moved to the garden of a house in the village. There was a good yard at the south end of the station on the east side of the line, access from the south. The original station building burned down in 1893 and was never replaced with a substantial structure. Both platforms had small timber buildings, which is what we see here. Before we leave, we'll have a little look around. This was quite a holiday destination in the area, as far as I'm aware. 
It's a uh, really nice part of Scotland. It's really peaceful. Even today, it's uh, a peaceful area. Nice detail here with the uh, good stock waiting. Lorries in the yard. And the frame rate is, uh, if I look over there, it's decent. The only reason it's getting hit a bit is because the Bossman 5 is quite hard on uh, FPS, but even then I'm still managing 25 reasonably. Nice water tower detail there. Crossing. All in all, very good looking uh, station area. So we'll get rid of the south again. Where is where we start the serious stuff for uh, climbing, I believe. Next up, we'll go through King's House Hall, and then it's Balquidder where the real climb starts up to Glenogal. This section here, I believe, is a, a cycle track that uses. I seem to remember uh, seeing this on the road. <laughs> Quite a hill there over that little crossing. detailed yet again. Quite an immersive route, I'm really getting that sort of feeling of uh, somewhere in Scotland. It's a route I've wanted to see in Trenton for years, so it's uh, fantastic to finally have it. I actually think this route, in, in uh, all honesty, is nicer, or as nice as nearly the West Island line. It really is uh, beautiful. In real life sense, I mean. If you've driven across this way in the uh, summer, on a summer's day, you'll know, you'll know what I mean. Especially if you uh, can imagine the open line as well, if you continued along there without all the overgrown trees and everything that's, that's sort of plaguing it these days. Really nice uh, run to the sea. We're heading shortly, we'll uh, come to Balquidder. Now, Balquidder is an interesting one because in real life, Balquidder actually still exists. It's shut, obviously, but the actual uh, station entrance and everything, you can still go up to it. We had a look at it last year um, and walked out to the. Uh, you can walk up the steps to where the platform used to be. You can't go in because it's a uh, holiday park. So, if you stay in the holiday park, I believe you can stay there. There's some caravans or something there, from what I recall. Um, yeah, up at the station up here where we're going towards now, which is on the uh, steepest start and the steepest part of the climb. This entrance hall here, which looks fantastic by the way, as a custom asset, that is exactly how I uh, remember it. Um, you can still see this in real life. And the actual approach road, it's the sign on it still says uh, Balquida, I think it does Balquida Station or something like that. Or Balquida Junction. But I mean, this is the old station here. So this is where the line to Perth used to go off, so you go across here to Creef and then it eventually led to Perth. Creef is there. Quite an important little junction really in its time. And this line used to leave the um, 
still into Perth line uh, and head over to Calendar. So this was a, an alternate way from Glasgow to Perth, in, in, in all honesty. Calendar was a fairly major sort of uh, place as well. It used to have quite a lot of services. Even reports of some really sort of uh, bigger engines sort of getting from Perth as well over the years because it was... Um, Perth had a major shed, both L and the R and LMS locos used to visit, and um, Calendar occasionally got those sort of locos coming across. I mean, the actual this actual line beyond Calendar, the early and uh, later team days, I think it was more, mainly Block 5s, uh, although some older Caledonian locos did manage to uh, stay on the branches around Killing Junction and stuff like that, although Standard 4s, I think, came in as well during, near the end. So it's quite a lot of variety um, in, some, in some aspects. Um, it's nice actually we've got most, I think, most if not all of the locos other than the diesel types uh, actually in train sim. I mean, the diesel types was the North British ones that ran across here quite a lot and obviously they're not, at least not in any decent sense uh, in train sim. So we'll make a quick stop here and I'll read a bit about Balquadda as we stop. Um, just approaching the station now. Again, plenty of lovely uh, custom assets going off that I can see. We're just coming over the point work now into the station. And we're going to use this inside platform, then turn left at the junction just after the station. Looks like the custom platforms. I'm not sure if they come from another route, maybe, but uh, all in all, looking very good. So I'll have a little read about this in the uh, manual, Balquida Station, Balquida Junction Station. Uh, it was opened 1st of June 1870 and was originally named Loch Head. The station was renamed as Balquida on the 1st of July 1904 and in December 1904 it was relocated slightly further south in preparation for becoming a junction with the Loch Head, Fence St. Fillions and Calmary Railway. Upon the opening of the junction on the 1st of May 1905, the station boasts two signal boxes and an engine shed. When the line to Creef closed on the 1st of October 1951, the station ceased to be a junction. The crossing loop was taken out of use on the 21st of March 1965. So well, we've got the loco there prepared, ready for the climb, which will be starting in a few minutes. Let's have a look around. There's some lovely signage here. I'll quit a change of the locker and that's filling his comma. Just having a little look in the manual again. So Creef used to be able to also turn off towards Glen Eagles as well, which I'm just looking at now, which is what I was uh, doing. You can get a route, there was a route to Glen Eagles and there's also a route to uh, Perth. So yeah, more custom assets on here. Station buildings custom. That's where the subway would have been, I think. Liking these water tower assets as well, they're looking good. So in a sec we'll click we'll depart and then it'll be onwards up towards um, Glen Ogle, which is the pit, the bit I'm really looking forward to. Um, the Glen Ogle Valley is a really steep sided valley. Um, the viaduct sort of on the side of the valley there looks uh, amazing in real life and it's a cycle track actually. It's the area where the line was actually, the closure was caused because of the uh, rockfall. Oh, there's the engine shed here, I don't actually notice that. I'm not sure what's going on my turntable, perhaps I'm, sp I'm missing that by the looks. Uh, that's probably me that's not downloaded something. Um, all in all, nice little station and uh, turntable set of assets though. Looking good. So we'll depart now, we'll head up towards Glen Ogle.
going to attack this climb quite hard because uh, I want to get a decent bit of speed up as I get onto it. So I will stay quiet on this climb because I need to uh, concentrate on getting the engine settings right. You can see now we're climbing really high above the valley. The road is on the right on the other side of the valley. You can actually see this same one still today. So you can see the other line on the bottom of the valley there that goes towards Creve and Perth. Lockern head and this viaduct here is still a section of that remaining over the river and this is then the Glen Ogle that we're going up here and this is uh, just done in real life it's amazing looking at that in game already looks uh, decent try and get a decent screenshot somewhere up this section I think with the uh, valley in the background Losing a bit of speed, just need to see what's going on there. Got the reverser quite low because I'm trying to keep the uh, pressure up whilst putting some water in.
launched at 1 in 60 gradient that were going up here. And it was a go again, as I said, up at the section where the rock fell up and that closed the line. Really is nice scenery. I love the little water effects that they've done as well. Getting quite a low FPS on that section, I guess, because that's because it's got the uh, other section of scenery uh, on the com on the Comrie Creek branch being rendered in in the background. where the rock fall happened just up here. You can sort of see there as well and that's where the viaduct is. Really tightly curved uh, sort of wrap against the rocks viaduct. Uh, only time of day when it was ever in sun was high summer, mid-afternoon, especially with the sun on the right side as well. On an evening it goes to the other side. Yeah, this is actually a footpath. You can walk down here. I uh, walked it with Chris last year. You can walk it from uh, the top we walked from, just there where the car park is. Uh, it took us about 20 minutes to walk down there, if that. Really nice uh, tarmac cycle track, so it's good for uh, easy walks, to be honest. And it's right near the main road, so it's nice and easily uh, accessible as well. So we haven't got much left of the climb now, which is coming towards the summit. And that's Glenogle Head Crossing, which is at the top of the uh, Glen, obviously. in this bridge when we went. It's a really tall sort of bridge. see the summit here then. Just just come over the top. And 
Well, not bother stopping at the summit, I don't think. little signal box here. So this is called Glen Oglehead Crossing. You can still see where this station used to be in real life. Glen Oglehead, uh, start again. Glen Oglehead Crossing was opened on the 1st of June 1870. The station was originally named Killin, uh, was the temporary term terminus of the Condor and Oban line. The situation continued for three years until August 7, 19, uh, 1873 when the line was extended to Tindrum. The station was renamed Glen Oglehead on the 1st of April 1886, concurrent with the opening of the Killing Railway and the new station in the village of Killing itself. So we're coming down towards Killing Junction, which is where the uh, line for Killing used to go off. Killing is actually nowhere near this. I mean, this was called Killing, and Killing's right over there somewhere. There. So as we now head down the hill, I'll just continue reading that. The station was then rarely used after the, uh, the branch to Killam was opened. It closed to passengers on 1st of April 1889, which is <laughs> quite a long time ago. It was occasionally used by excursions until 1916, after which it was used only by railway staff until the line closure. The station was located just uh, south of the 941 foot summit of the climb up from Killing Junction. To the north, the line dropped at 1 in 60, clearing to the mountainside down through Glen Ogle, which is where we've just gone. So we're now dropping down towards Killing Junction. Killing Branch went along over here, which is this one. Um, and it used to have a really interesting runaround procedure, as you can see there, which I'll probably feature in another video, although you won't be able to actually do the runaround procedure, I don't think, in TS, which is a shame. Um, in, T in real life at Killing, what they used to do is um, they used to uncouple from the coach. That isn't actually Killing, I don't think Killing's the next one down. I think. I'm not sure exactly which one Killing is. Um, no, that's um, Akan. Killing is the next one, just there. And the really interesting thing that they used to do was, um, because it was on a really steep grade and there was no actual run around loop, but then it became a terminus. They used to uncouple from the coach. The guards used to put the brake on in the coach, obviously. Uh, they used to run forward and then go back into the siding with the loco and then the guard used to gravity shun the coach past and then the loco would back onto it again. So it was a really interesting sort of way of doing it, which is just kind of unique, I imagine. Some, I can't imagine, uh, certainly not many other places that do it. And that's the first time that I've seen the weird TS uh, dodgy hills and can't do hilly routes phenomenon over there with the rocks on the hills. It's a bit strange. That's the first time I've noticed it though, and on such a uh, mountainous route, that's good. It's only for that little bit because again it looks fine again once I get on this curve. So we're dropping down now quite steeply. 1 in 70, stopping the mere minutes at Killing Junction. See the other line now coming in from the side here. As we make our final approach into Killing Junction Station.
bit of extra uh, power there into the platform. So again, you got loads of custom stuff here. Custom signal box, speed boards. Again, very impressive for a, for a freeware route. And as I keep saying, I've said it before already, it's such a shame that this route is not very well known because it's stunning. It's one of the best routes I've ever played and I'm actually liking this more than the West Highland um, extension route at the minute and that at the time was stunning to me. It really is capturing the Scottish atmosphere, which uh, is important, I think. Again, more custom stuff here. Quite interesting to see such a sort of impressive junction station in the middle of nowhere, really. It's weird. So, I'll read again from the manual in a sec. Just park ourselves in the, in the passenger coach at the minute. Um, so looking for Killing Junction in the manual. Killing Junction station was a three platform station with two platforms and a loop on the main line. The up platform being used as a, being an island, the outer face of which chiefly served the Killing Railway and had a loop. Trains from the main line could access the branch platform and the loop from either end. There was no public access to the station except by a train. This being a large exchange, this basically was just a large exchange platform, basically just a changing point for trains. The station was built at the expense of the Killing Railway, who did rather well out of the agreement, gaining an extra mainline passing loop and use of the branch loop. There was a gentle dropping gradient from the east to west of the station, which was built on the long climb from Loop to Glenogle Head. The Caldonoba main line to Glenogle Head climbed away from the station at 1 in 70, whereas the Killing Junction, uh, the Killing Line dropped away at 1 in 50, which is what we can see. If you go behind the train here, you can actually see that, obviously. Um, that's climbing at 1 in 70, and that drops at 1 in 50. And if you look at old photos, you can really see the sort of dramatic change um, in each one. All the part. Next up for us is Lube Station, then it's uh, Korean Lavich, so not too far to go now. Again, that looks like another custom asset. Such great attention to detail, it really is. So now we've got only, only got nine miles now to Crane Lodge. Not much further to go. Love the heather uh, sort of in the uh, grass ball there. Captures the Scottish feel of it. Next up in a couple of minutes is Lewin, that's at the bottom of the uh, climb. We're dropping down quite rapidly now, again, 1 in 60. 1 in 60 now. Those hills in the background, you just see the white ones there. 
background they are uh, perfectly in line to And this is where when you're on the road you can actually see the line sort of way up on the hill up here. It's uh, quite a really open valley. Uh, and this valley leads us all the way to Crane Lights now. This area hasn't really changed much, it's still quite sort of moorland and uh, a few trees dotted about. Great run down the valley. And there's the road that runs a lot here in real life. As I said, it's a lovely uh, drive along there. It's a decent road as well. It's the A84, I think it is. Memory serves. I think that's what it is. Properly good drive. So in just a minute we'll be arriving at Louis, but we'll go and take a look at that now as we're approaching. Another little uh, river bridge there. It's nice how all the buildings sort of capture the feel of the view. I think that's a, uh, one of the French assets that's sort of got a weird black line on the texture by the looks. Not uh, one that they've made themselves. This is Louis station. Again, custom station. Some of these assets, uh, what could need to be done there is that brick block needs to be kind of brought out a bit to top that flickering texture, I guess. Uh, must be where the station burner sort of planted into it. So we're now at the bottom of the climb, just coming into uh, Loop Station. <laughs> from here it's pretty much level all the way across to Crane Lights because we've kind of dropped down the valley from the uh, top of the hill now.
a shame that some of the textures on those custom assets, they're sort of, I'm guessing it's because the just there's something slightly iffy with them. It's quite hard to get a screenshot there without the uh, sign going a bit iffy. It does look good though. Really captures that sort of Scottish uh, atmosphere very well. So as we depart into the distant there, we'll uh, read about Loop Station. Loop was opened 1st of August 1873, when the calendar on Elbin Railway was extended from Glen Ogle Head to Tyndrum. This rural station had two platforms, one on either side of a crossing loop, and goods facilities were provided by a fan of sidings on the north side of the station. The line in from Cranelight to the west was fairly level, but east of the station began the stiff climb to Killing Junction at 169 which is what we've just uh, come down a few minutes ago. And the sidings that it referred to um, is these two here. Not exactly uh, many of them, but uh, quite a long siding, I suppose. Not exactly much here to surface, though, let's be honest. <laughs> so there is uh, a very small settlement still here these days. So we're now back on the opposite side of the road, the road is there on the left hand side and we're on the uh, section next to it. I think uh, some of this has been swallowed up by the road, I'm not sure. Um, these days this road is a more major sort of road, it's been widened a lot, this section of it has uh, been redone up. So it's quite possible that some of this has disappeared, I'm not, I'm not really sure to be honest. It's quite hard to trace this bit because there's a, a lot more trees along this section these days. And the textures on the hills. For TS uh, mountain routes, it really doesn't look that bad at all. I mean, it, looks, it doesn't look bad at all, it looks fantastic. But when you think of train sim routes in, in mountainous areas, they usually look pretty poor. But this, uh, I didn't expect this one to look poor because I knew it looked great anyway, but uh, it looks even better than I was expecting.
four miles now to Crane Launch, so not far. That section there, I think you can still see from the uh, from the road. I recognise when you uh, go along here, you go quite close to a, a wall on a curve bit, and uh, they're just there, must be obviously where the, uh, the line used to go next to the road. And this is really scenic down here. Railways faster than the road still. So don't have much further now to go until we get to Crane Lights. So we're approaching into Crane Lodge. Just a mile to go now. Loving the floodplain effects and stuff, it's really good. Trying to get a screenshot of that hill behind because I love the texture work that's gone into that. It's really created the sort of patchwork effect you got on the uh, Scottish Hills. Try and get one here. Yeah, that's quite nice. So Crane Lavich is where the uh, West Island line used to connect in, but also you used to go over the top of the uh, Condon Urban line, which we'll have a look at when we get there. 
I'll stop short of the station just in case the uh, quick drive decides it wants to end. So we'll go ahead and have a look at the crane limit slower. So nowadays here you've got a car park here and you can actually still uh, go up to the platforms here. This station again no longer exists but uh, this was actually still used as a timber loading point until the 80s by uh, freight off the West Highland. Again it's a custom station. Now, the only thing I've noticed in a few of them is like uh, textures flickering and stuff but uh, overall the actual models themselves are really good. I really like them. It's such a nice feature, especially you consider it's, it's a freeway route. I mean, you know, freeway routes don't get much better than this. Really don't. If it's not your thing, then obviously you might disagree, but uh, as a steam enthusiast or mixed enthusiast myself, um, it's one of the better, if not the best, steam route I think I've played for a long time in terms of freeway. Probably since I played. Uh, the CKPR by uh, Ben Yates in terms of freeway routes that uh, are based in the steam area. I think it's probably the best since then. And that is the West High Online there going over the top. And that climbs up the valley, obviously. This is the Calder and Oban. And that is the link, which is now the main line to Oban, but in the uh, steam days. This uh, one down here was the main line. That was just a service line, basically, to get to create like a chopper. The lower line was the main line to Oban. And this is Crane Lounge lowest uh, upper station. I'm guessing the asset there is the one used in the West Highland route. The West Highland South. Very nice. All in all, it's uh, a fantastic route. I highly recommend that you download it. Check out the description for the download link. I do hope this goes through to Auburn one day. It'd be fantastic to have this route through to Auburn and maybe to Glen Eagles or Perth as well. Superb. Or Sterling as well. But yeah, uh, really enjoyed that. Highly recommend that you download it, guys. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, really hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Tom's usually live Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays, 7.30, Fridays, 7 o'clock. It's twitch.tv forward slash TV underscore Tom. Please do like and subscribe to us on uh, YouTube. It helps us uh, get the channel out there more. We're trying to grow it as we can and we're trying to put out more content for you guys and um, we uh, really appreciate your continued support if you've got any tutorials that you'd like us to see then like to see then please comment and stuff like that uh, we can try as best not saying that we know everything but we uh, can try as best if it's something that we know um, root editor stuff generally we can do and uh, scenario tutorials and stuff like that but yep thank you for watching guys see you later